Today we're going to continue reading Ranger in Time. We are up to chapter seven, Who's the Doctor? Lily and May weren't the only ones looking for help. Horses, carts, and carriages clogged the entrance to the pavilion, waiting to drop off the injured. Ranger stayed close to the girls as they pulled Lee's wagon through the crowd. This new place felt too smoky and crowded to be safe. Whenever Lily and May paused, Ranger stepped up to the wagon and nuzzled Lee's hand. Sometimes the boy stirred and put his hand on Ranger's head, but more and more often he didn't seem to notice. Over here, Lily said, they pulled the wagon inside and she gasped. The wooden building swarmed with doctors and nurses. Red Cross women rushed along with carts and supplies. Hundreds of mattresses crowded the floor, all full of people hurting. Some had burns from the fire. Others had head injuries and broken bones. Maybe they'd been trapped like Lee. Excuse me, May called out to a nurse rushing past, but her voice got lost in the chaos. Ranger raced in front of the nurse and barked. The nurse whirled around. Whose dog is this? Please, Lily rushed up to the woman. My friend's brother is hurt. I think his leg is broken and his breathing is all strange and shallow. The nurse's face softened and she seemed to forget about Ranger. She knelt beside Lee and put a hand on his forehead. Then she picked up his wrist and held it for a moment. He's in shock, she said and looked around. Nearby, two men were lifting a skinny man from one of the mattresses. His body was limp. As they carried him to a corner of the building, the nurse pointed to the empty space. Come along with me. They lifted Lee onto the mattress and covered him with a wool blanket. We need to keep him warm until a doctor's free to tend to his leg, the nurse said, who made the splint. I did. Lily looked down. Poor Lee had been bounced halfway through the city with her messy work barely holding his leg in place. She'd done a terrible job and waiting for the nurse to tell her. You did a fine job, the nurse said quickly. I could tell you didn't have much to work with, but you kept the bone in place. Stay with him for now. I'll send a doctor when I can. And she hurried off into the crowd. Soon a woman in a long, dark dress walked up to Lee's mattress. I understand your brother's leg is broken, she said. Yes, May said. Another nurse already sent for a doctor. We're waiting for him. For her, the woman said. She knelt beside the mattress, opened a small leather bag, and pulled out a stethoscope. I'm the doctor. Tell me what happened. Lily stared for a moment. How was he hurt? The doctor asked again. Lily snapped out of her wandering. He was trapped when the market roof caved in. The doctor nodded. She pressed the end of the stethoscope to Lee's chest and listened. Is he all right, May asked. I think he will be, the doctor said. She pulled back the blanket and gently unwrapped the sheet that held Lily's splint in place. With a sharp knife, she cut off Lee's cotton shoe and sliced his trouser leg up the seam. I'm gonna straighten your leg now, she said quick, quietly. Lee cried out in pain and Lily had to look away. Her eyes burned with tears and the mattresses and hurrying people all blurred together. Finally, the doctor said, all right, I've set the bone splinted it and given him something to help him rest. Once the fires are under control, we'll see about moving to a proper hospital. She sighed and Lily could tell she wasn't sure when that, what, when that might happen. Thank you, May said. The doctor not, nodded and hurried off to another patient. May turned to Lily then, and thank you, she said. If you hadn't helped me, I shook her head and pressed her lips together, but you probably need to go. Won't someone be looking for you? Probably, Lily hesitated, not sure how much May knew about her. I live at the mission house now. Lomo has 50 girls, so she won't have time to worry much about me. I'll stay with you to keep your brother company. I'd like that, May said. She looked down at Lee, sleeping now, and stroked his wispy black hair. Then she looked back up at Lily. You must miss your family. I mean, you have a new family at the house with. Not really, Lily said. We're cared for, but it was hard to explain. Lily's memories of her real family had faded in the years since she left for China, left China, but the hole in her heart was still there. She reached down to pet the fluffy golden dog and that seemed to have adopted her. It was the closest thing to a friend she'd had in a long time. May was starting to feel like a friend too. Lily didn't want to think about leaving her and going back to the mission house. Ranger was glad to be out of the, bit, 
busy, dusty streets. His paws were sore and he was tired. He leaned into Lily's hand and closed his eyes, but then he caught a scent that made his nose twitch. Ranger sat up straight and sniffed the musty pavilion air. It the smelt of blood and sweat and smoke. Stronger and thicker than before, the fire was closer than it had been. Ranger looked around, but no one seemed concerned. What's the matter, dog? Lily said, staring at him. Ranger left her. He hurried up and down the rows of mattresses until he found where the smoke was strongest. Then he barked and barked until he was surrounded by dog, doctors and nurses. Finally, someone shouted over the crowd, the roof is on fire. Enter in time, chapter eight, racing the flames. Panic filled the pavilion. Where is it? Find a ladder, get it out. Doctors and nurses raced up and down the rows of mattresses. They clustered in a little grouping, wringing their hands. They pointed up the rafters, then looked around at the hundreds of people who would never be able to save themselves if the fire spread. Should we try to get him back in the wagon, May said. Lily looked down at Lee, finally resting after his painful, bumpy ride through the city. She couldn't imagine walking him and hurting him again, but if it was the only way to save him from the flames, then it's out. They put it out, someone shouted. Lily's heart unclenched. Thank goodness they didn't have to make an awful, awful choice. The roar of the building subsided and a nurse came by to check on Lee. His pulse is nearly back to normal, she said, and smiled at Lily and May. That's good news and it's safe now, so we don't have to move him. Lily asked just to be certain. For now, the nurse said, once his, one of the policemen got up in the cross beams and was able to put out the fire, but she glanced up at the ceiling. But what, May said. The nurse shook her head quickly. The sky is full of embers and the fire still spreading. She took Lee's blanket around him and stood up, but we'll face that if it comes. Lily swallowed hard. Thank you. After the nurse left, the girl sat on the floor besides Lee. Ranger flopped down next to them. I never knew you had a dog at the mission house, May said. We didn't, Lily leaned over to scratch Ranger's ear. He showed up this morning after the quake. He came after me when the beam started falling. I'd gone back into the house to try and save our goldfish. She looked down. I'm sorry, May said quietly. She reached over and patted Ranger's head. We had a canary when we first arrived. He used to sing in his corner of the store when I came home from school. Lily swallowed hard and looked up. What's it like there? School? May looked surprised. Well, the teacher's strict and she... Someone near the door shouted and two policemen burst into the building. May's mouth hung open with her un unfinished thought. What's happening? A nurse ran past them. Come with me, she called and motioned for them to follow. The fire's returned, she called over her shoulder. Dr. Millar has ordered the building evacuated. We need every able-bodied person to help. What about my brother, May shouted after the nurse. We'll get him out, but you must come with me now. May hesitated and Lily stood, excuse me, and Lily understood why. Lee looked so small and crumpled on the mattress. How could they leave him? But they had no choice. We must do as she says, May. We'll hurry. We'll come back for him soon. Until then, the dog can watch over him. Lily looked down at Ranger. Stay, she said firmly. Stay with him. We'll come back, stay. Ranger understood, stay. He sat beside Lee mat Lee's mattress and watched the girls rush after the nurse. The smoke was getting thicker. Ranger stood by the boy's side. His first aid kit was wrapped up in Lily's bedding, still quiet. But the whole building buzzed with rushing fear. All around him, people were shouting and crying and women hurried by and a tiny baby in her hands. Another man limped along, dragging a child on a mattress behind him. Ranger had helped people who were injured before. He'd seen people hurting, but never so many at once. How could he possibly help them all? Lily and May followed the nurse to the big doors that led to the street. The aisles were clogged with people dragging patients on their mattresses. Outside, men flagged down automobiles and horse-drawn carts. The entrance was packed with waiting vehicles. Over here, a man called to them. Lily and May followed the nurse to his side, where a short, plump woman lay passed out on a mattress near a waiting cart. Her head was wrapped with bandages, and her hands were scratched and burned. We need three on each side to load her in. Come on, the man said. 
Lillian May stood next to the man on one side of the mattress, while the nurse and two other men squatted down across from them. On three now, the man said and counted. One, two, three. They clasped hands under the sagging mattress, lifted it up and shuffled along until they reached the wagon. Then they loaded the woman in, mattress and all. The nurse pointed them towards another mattress. The clo excuse me, those closets to the doors had to be moved first to make room for others, like Lee, who were stuck in the middle of the building. Lily coughed on the thickening smoke and looked back into the churning sea of people. How quickly were the flames spreading? Would there be enough carts and automobiles to move everyone? And would there be time? They were racing the fire now, and there was no time to tell who would win.